throughout time, history has shown that what we call conventional medicine today will be considered relatively primitive in the future and will probably be considered barbaric in the more distant future. As we enter the 21st century, a new type of comprehensive health care is emerging, one in which various natural healing practices and conventional medical treatments play an integral role. Today, with people trying to prevent disease by living their lives more naturally, there is an eager switch towards chiropractic, now one of the largest healing professions, and the trend continues to grow. With the manifestation of often seemingly miraculous cures, there are ever fewer skeptics. The impact of the car accident was rather devastating, uh, primarily because I was not expecting to be uh, paralyzed. I was seeing the physiotherapist initially, but I certainly was still not walking after a period of six weeks. So I finally went, decided I was going to ask my medical doctor what the prognosis was and what he expected um, would happen. And so I went in to see him and I said, and by the way, when will I walk again? And his answer was that it's highly unlikely that you will ever walk again. And that was a little devastating to me because I had these four small children that I was raising and supporting on my own. Although I was told by the rest of the world that chiropractors were quacks and that this probably wouldn't work either, at that point I had nothing left to lose. So it took from the time that I went to the chiropractor for the first visit about six weeks till I was standing and uh, vertical and walking again. She quotes, I would never walk again. She goes to a chiropractor, she's walking. She's in remission. There is nothing wrong with her spinal column. There's something wrong with her spinal nerve. So if we're going to prove these things on the basis of personal testimony and stories, then there's no point. Well, you see, there's too much anecdotal evidence and outcome uh, that we see in chiropractic for the last hundred years. Over two million patients are treated every day. There are over 50,000 chiropractors. More people are going to chiropractors than any other class physician. There's a reason for this. Despite public acceptance and government support, some in the medical profession are still not convinced that chiropractic can be any more than the manipulation of back pain. And there are now serious investigations as to what chiropractic is all about. Chiropractic is an art, science, and a healing philosophy that literally means done by the hand. It is a drug-free, surgery-free alternative that respects the body's natural healing and recuperative power. Back pain patients represent the majority of chiropractic practice. And studies conclude it is safe and effective. In 1993, the Ontario Ministry of Health commissioned the Manga Report by health economist Pran Manga at the University of Ottawa to compare doctors of chiropractic and medical doctors in the management of low back pain. We found that chiropractors were far more effective in managing low back pain than medical doctors were. We also found them to be cheaper. We found them to be far safer. And what we found is that therapies used by medical doctors in treating low back pain were not tested, were not evaluated, and many of them were quite dangerous. Patients with many conditions respond to chiropractic. Chiropractors treat what they have traditionally called subluxation rather than conditions. In lay language, it's uh, essentially a vertebra that's either misaligned or not functioning right, putting some pressure on a nerve and causing some symptoms. What our job is to do is to, first of all, locate those subluxations, then to correct the subluxation to allow for maximum nerve supply to come out. A subluxation is essentially separation from wholeness. The very traditional, old-fashioned concept of hard bone on soft nerve doesn't serve the needs to properly explain now what research is beginning to show. Not only that, there are so many different subluxations that it wouldn't be appropriate to describe in, let's say, a paragraph that this is what a subluxation is. The only evidence that chiropractic treatment is effective pertains directly to acute low back pain. In other words, that is the scope in which the chiropractor works best. 
Dr. Hamilton Hall, an orthopedic surgeon and self-promoted back doctor, is director of the Canadian Back Institute, with franchise clinics employing mostly physical therapists. When we move beyond that into the scope of conditions that are not directly related to the spine, there is no evidence that chiropractic care has any benefit whatsoever beyond perhaps the effect of placebo, the effect of it must work because I believe it works. Randomized clinical trial, which is state of the art in scientific research, proves without any doubt, at, at least so far, that there is no placebo effect from chiropractic intervention. Dr. Jay Holder, former faculty of the University of Miami Center for Addiction Studies and Education, is the first American physician to be awarded the Albert Schweitzer Prize in Medicine. Chiropractic is not just a musculoskeletal issue. Chiropractic is a broad-based primary care physician issue. Dr. Holder at the Holder Research Institute has pioneered a scientific model of subluxation, utilizing an adjusting instrument that reproduces the chiropractic thrust of the hands. There are hundreds of thousands of studies that they have performed. If they can show me one study that disproves chiropractic or shows that chiropractic does not work, that does not exist. And there's a good reason why chiropractic works. The chiropractor provides one type of mechanical treatment. They call it adjustment, we call it manual therapy, but it basically means moving the spine to eliminate acute back pain. Chiropractors have labeled it adjustment to differ them from osteopaths and, and the few physiotherapists who may uh, manipulate. And the reason for that is that chiropractors are the only ones that have been trained in manipulation. To practice chiropractic, you must have a minimum of six years education from a college or university program. Students take four years of the same basic sciences as medical students. Instead of surgery and pharmacology, students are exposed to the skill of the actual physical manipulation. Unfortunately, with all that education and all that need to do something, it's difficult to limit yourself to something as mundane as back pain. And so there's a tendency for these adjustments to be used in dealing with other areas. Dr. Hall is referring to patients like Charmaine Alexander, who have found relief from conditions other than back pain. I wouldn't have tried chiropractic had I, got, had I not gotten pregnant, because I would have still been able to take my medication, and I thought that was just the way that I had to live for the rest of my life. Charmaine Alexander has suffered from migraine headaches since she was seven years old. From a young age, she was prescribed Tylenol, Furanol, as well as asthma medication. I just went to see the chiropractor for my back pain because I couldn't take anything for back pain. But I had no idea that, you know, um, he could help me with my headaches or my asthma or anything else that I was taking medication for. Another diagnostic procedure that we use, especially on children and pregnant patients, because we don't typically x-ray those patients, is what's called a surface electromyograph. Charmaine's chiropractor demonstrates a direct relationship with her spine and her headaches and asthma. Now in Charmaine's case, we noticed that there was an increased muscle activity occurring in the neck region, so that led us to believe that these subluxations may be causing her headaches. And as you travel down here a little bit more, we can see there's a fair amount of activity occurring around T4, and we know that's where the nerve supply of the lungs comes from. And then I thought, okay, well, I don't feel as wheezy today. I'll cut down a little bit back on the Beclafort. And soon I was, I was off it. I didn't have any headaches, and I was off my asthma. And I thought, one day, you know, wow, I, I feel good. On a future EMG that was done approximately one month later, the area up through here where there was a lot of activity originally has calmed down quite nicely. And also this area around T4 where there was a lot of one-sided activity is now obviously a lot less, and her asthma is, are, is also in check. For a patient who is being treated as an asthmatic to go on to chiropractic adjustment instead of effective asthma medication makes no sense. I can see myself continuing chiropractic for the rest of my life because right now I don't, I don't think that I want to go back to my medications and like I said, I, I love this feeling. If we look at one particular condition, asthma, there is no evidence that manipulation of the spine, either the neck or the low back, has any effect on the way in which we breathe.